And now, the After Action Review with Rod Rodriguez. Last month, I released episode 30 of the After Action Review podcast, an interview with Jimmy Burgess, who at the time worked with a veteran-owned company called Forward March, Inc. In that episode, Jimmy described the company's mission, how he came to work for its founder and his longtime friend and mentor, Paul Volpe, overall expressing a very positive experience to be working for Forward March. As you know, some of these episodes can take time to edit and release from the date they were recorded. There was about three weeks or so between recording and release of episode 30, and a lot can happen in that span of time. When that episode was finally released, Jimmy had parted ways with Forward March, Inc. to start his own company, True North Enterprises, a company unique in its own right, but unmistakably similar in mission to Forward March, Inc. It's not hard to see that Jimmy took what he learned from his prior experience and applied it to his own endeavor. I learned from Jimmy that he hadn't been happy with some of what he saw at Forward March and had decided to formally announce his departure to Paul shortly after we had talked. Now, this separation between two business partners has been likened to that of a divorce. Most business separations, especially when it's a small business, rarely get much attention, but there is a lot to learn from these moments that can really make or break one or both partners. This is especially true when we mix friendship, money, loyalty, intellectual property, and the bond between two veterans. I am Jimmy Burgess, director, founder, and senior instructor of True North Enterprises. Uh, well, I met Paul, I guess it would have been probably uh, 1994 time frame. Um, I was a young giblet, uh, still in high school, kind of looking for purpose and direction. Uh, and he was that. I mean, he was the, uh, the look and feel of everything I kind of wanted to be when I got older. He was an army recruiter. Um, he was a former drill sergeant, a, a former tanker, full of life, wanted to see people obviously join the army because uh, he saw the direction that it took him um, and how happy it made him. And that just kind of came out. He was a different sort of recruiter. He was extremely personable and he was definitely genuine. You know, he, I could tell when, you know, he talked to me, you know, obviously it was, I was that young kid wet behind the ears and uh, he kind of uh, guided me in the right direction. My name is Paul Volpe uh, with Forward March Inc. Bottom line, 28 years in the Army. Uh, spent my last uh, bit of time with Recruiting Command, working with the Army Pays program, connecting employers with veterans and, and military transitioners and, and growing military hiring programs for employers. Um, you know, while I was on active duty with the military, became our commanding general SME for the program nationwide. And, you know, just had the pleasure of working with and partnering the Army with great employers who, you know, wanted to hire military members and, and do more for veterans on the transition side and so on. Once I finally got out in 2008, we kind of kept in contact a little bit um, and I went and became a firefighter and, um, you know, I'd kind of expressed to him that I wanted to do like motivational speaking type stuff. And he's like, well, you should check out my business this is what I do. And uh, with the leadership training. And so I said, yeah, I would, you know, I, I think where I'm at, Joplin can really use something like that. Um, so he he definitely helped mentor me uh, in the aspect of veteran hiring and uh, leadership training. Jimmy and I, Jimmy Burgess and I had been friends and I'd helped him join the army 20 years earlier. Great kid, highly motivated, great passion for helping veterans. You know, you, you immediately begin to tap the brakes because you immediately, again, begin to think about do I want to potentially put this relationship at risk? Um, how do I go about really developing the business, coaching, mentoring, and motivating Jimmy as I did with soldiers in the military, but knowing that you don't have the, the guidelines, the restrictions, the structure that the military has? For me, I think a lot of the times he still saw that uh, that young 16, 17 year old kid standing at his recruiter window looking for direction. Um, but with with my experiences in life, I mean, I turned 40 next year. Um, you know, I was a product of the army. I grew up and really found my own self in the military. And uh, 
I, th I think that was kind of a roadblock for us on some of the stuff. You know, again, I've got a certain vision. And then, of course, as any commander, then you want that vision executed, you know, as and, and, and Jimmy was of a mindset of, you know, a little bit different than I had. And so we well, I tried to speak to that, you know, a branding when we do videos, very important way the public perceives you as a veteran, that they're done in a certain way, that they're not done in your living room, you know, with by your refrigerator, you know, doing a video to the public you know, or doing a video to the client. I mean, I, those are little things and standards I expected to be maintained. And, and, and again, one of the things I always spoke about was being the consummate professional, whether it be your vehicle, your, your clothes, the way you look. And I'm demanding in that regard. Jimmy is, is, a, is a professional by all means, but I just started noticing, again, little differences, just like when you're in a relationship, you notice things where things don't connect. So the quickest way to handle all of that is immediately discuss it as an action after, you know, as an after action review, for example, you know, when we conduct an appointment, what went right, what went wrong, how do we do it better next time? And just, you know, Jimmy was felt, you know, some different verbiage was better, or, you know, he thought that an idea was better for an event. You know, he was more about putting on a an event than the basic need to complete the critical tasks every day and develop business and grow business. You know, there was more and more differences of the way we thought. So again, you address that, you discuss it, you determine a, a, a point of which you're both happy with the resolution and you and you move forward, but you've got to keep all of that up, out in front of you. So for me, it was when I'd have some conversations with him where it was like almost talking to a wall. You know, he's very strong personality type, you know, the alpha male. And then me also being an alpha male and having my vision and my focus, it, it, it's tough when you completely believe you know the right answer. And I think that's speaking from both sides. You know, and it's having enough of that uh, realization that where, you know, his vision um, is different than my vision doesn't necessarily make either vision wrong. Um, I just knew that if I wanted to really put myself in position for success, um, I think it just kind of evolved that way. There was no real aha moment. There was no north south moment where I knew I had to make that decision. When it finally happened, uh, knowing I had to kind of put myself in, in back in the correct situation of doing what I needed to be doing. The conversation with him, uh, what really kind of cut me deep, um, because obviously, uh, you know, I had to um, kind of stage uh, to, uh, to to make the bounce. And, you know, he, he had asked me, you know, if I was, uh, you know, trying to go behind his back or trying to, you know, uh, backstab or whatever. And it almost got to the point to me as as um, much as it hurts saying this it almost felt like if someone was drowning you and they're getting upset at the fact that you're trying to come up for air um, that's about as real as it gets right there and uh, that that's kind of what I felt I know his intent on the personal side wasn't for it to be like that um, I know that I, I believe that wholeheartedly in my heart still uh, to this day, but that's, that's really what it felt like. You know, there was a point of no return, I think, where he just had made the decision, uh, that he was going to separate it and, you know, but I approached it in, in, you know, again, as a friend and, you know, let's discuss it and put it out on the table, show your cards. And he basically was, you know, felt that it was time to move on and he executed the separation. And, um, you know, and already, and I, based on what I found out later, been, you know, kind of developing things, you know, behind our backs as, as, as he went forward, you know, survival of the fittest, you know, he's going to do what he's got to do to, you know, to grow his business and so on. You know, but part of it also was that, you know, he had some folks working for him that weren't producing as they sold me, they would. And when you've got a client spending a lot of money on, what you're to be producing and then you aren't going to produce i i need to know that so that i, I can take care of the client but you know uh, words aren't going to do it action is going to do it and so part of that was the issue as well you know some of the, the people that were working with jimmy just weren't producing 
weren't getting things done. And that also caused friction between us because again, I'm not going to pull punches either. You know, uh, I believe in communicating effectively. That doesn't mean I don't yell, I don't scream, but I'm going to be direct. Draw your flak jacket in Kevlar because you're going to take chess rounds and maybe in kind of a nice way. But when you, when you tell a client you're going to do something, then I'm one of those old school guys that expects you to do it. Again, as I said earlier, I don't, I don't expect to babysit people. You're a grown man. This is your task. Perform the task. We'll train you. We'll motivate you. I will mentor you, mentor you till you, till you need it no longer. And when you tell me you're good to go, green light, you're ready to rock and roll, then let's make it happen. If you need continued training and evaluation after that, then I can do it. But, and that was part of it too, was that he had people working with him that I think, you know, were, felt like they were kind of getting, weren't getting what they needed or wanted. And I, you know what? People choose their friends. And, and in this case, these were people that, you know, weren't getting the job done. I feel like there's things that maybe I didn't know about. Um, and I don't know if that was intentional or unintentional, um, but it was enough for me where when I'm asking these questions and I'm not receiving the answers that I want or my team's asking me questions and I can't give them a successful answer, a good answer or an answer I feel good about, it makes it difficult. And like I said, I don't think that's, that was a, um, an integrity thing or anything like that. I think it was just, you wanted to give me that empowerment and that, that title and sense of control but at the same time, you know, him and who he is and his personality, I felt he let me feel like I was running. But then as soon as I would hit that, the end of that leash, you know, it's that, that quick jerk back and uh, unleash me or release me, you know. And I think that's where I'm kind of conflicted because I do feel um, that it is his vision or the highway. I get that. I, I, unfortunately, I know I could have improved his vision more, uh, but I just don't think that he saw it um, or had the capabilities to really do something about it. Well, I think initially, you know, I was saddened, you know, um, because we had spent a year, we invested a year in developing Jimmy, training him, motivating his team. Um, he's got three or four folks that are very close to him and training and mentoring everybody. We spent a lot of money, you know, going up to their developing and traveling. And, and so you invest a whole lot, a lot of stuff that maybe you know, we didn't have to do, but I felt I wanted to show Jimmy my, my full commitment. So you're saddened at first and then, you know, but I told myself, okay, I'm gonna try to maintain, you know, you know, my calm, especially when I found out that, you know, things were being developed before we separated. And then of course, then you begin to worry about proprietary information and, and, and other things. So my business head starts to think, well, you know, from a legal standpoint, make sure we're protected that all of our, our training materials, all of our branding materials, all of our classes, everything that is for margin elite leader is protected. So you, you do that because you've got to protect your business and protect what you've developed. But, you know, there's uh, my friend side, you know, was trying to be as amicable as possible in the in the breakup. And his buddies were kind of acting like this was kind of a, like a high school breakup. And I'm like, well, you can perceive it the way you will. But bottom line, you know, I wanted to go through as hard as it was, you know, you bite your tongue and wanted to just, you know, wish him the best. And but I expect, you know, equipment back and all this stuff and certain guidelines to be followed through the the separation, um, you know, there's a lot of connections. There's a lot of fabric that's been interwoven between the two organizations and, and people. And, and of course, as the wound heals, you know, you begin to, to wish them the best, but you know, it's not fully healed. And, you know, it, it just, it's hard to believe that you put that much time, investment and money into something that didn't pan out. It's just like any relationship that you get into, you know, things happen to you because you let them happen to you. Um, and so that was a that was a very big lesson learned was, you know, I accepted that I, I hoped for the best and I kept kind of. So where you say that comparison with relationship stuff, that's that's very true. You get a lot of people that 
get into relationships and they say things are okay, this is fine, you know, I can kind of deal with this, uh, but then it kind of eats at you and it kind of wears away at you. And next thing you know, you're fighting every day. Uh, next thing you know, you're see- seeking another venture. I mean, that's, you know, the nature of the beast when it comes to it. And that's where that comparison of relationships is very accurate. When one person in that relationship, you know, chooses to accept certain things, um, then it's on them. So I, I still believe, I think where you say I'm torn and conflicted is because I realize a lot of that's on me. I, you know, I accepted a lot of things I probably shouldn't have accepted. It riles you up, but I, I guess it, it's, you know, as I told Jimmy, I, I try to, again, consider more the positive versus the negative in a situation like this. So I tried to, you know, lay out the, you know, the positive points and focus on those. Uh, to the point of even saying that I would hope that, you know, somewhere down the road we could work together and, and I could help in way to, to make him proficient. And then I heard a blurb of his training online recently and realized he was using the same stuff I had taught him. So what is the old saying about flattery? Somebody, you know, copying you is the best form of flattery. So there he was using my verbiage about critical tasks and being a leader and personal and professional development and all those things. So, you know, part of me was, you know, like the big brother was proud of what he was doing and that he was out there making it happen. And there's part of you that says, you know, man, I gotta make sure that he's not using my proprietary information and training, you know, from that regard. So, you know, you go through all those emotions. Um, I, I think the big thing would definitely be visibility and communication. Um, it, all questions should be able to be answered. Um, I've seen I've, I've seen both the successes and the setbacks to that. You know, because like I said, we like to work with veteran organizations. Like we work with the Brotherhood of Warriors, and that's two veterans that decided to partner together um, to make their business. And they've been very successful, and I think that is because they've got good communication. I think that distance needs to be close. It's tough um, doing anything. It doesn't have to be business stuff, nothing, um, when there's such a distance, you know, um, where you can't see face-to-face and meet face-to-face on a regular basis. Um, That makes things very difficult on both ends. Um, and I think that's probably the, that's probably the biggest thing. If you're going to get into um, a business or a partnership deal or be an entrepreneur, you have to be able to see your entire, you know, your line of sight has to be 100% visible. As long as the role is defined and maybe their roles are, are clearly different, but when you play in the same space and you're expecting to get the same ideas and the same uh, validation from certain things and certain expectations aren't met one person's going to definitely feel different about it than another you know if we didn't hit our million dollar mark by a certain period you know are you going to feel differently than i'm more worried about helping a thousand veterans so that's making me happy i'm happy with that but the other person's getting infuriated because we're not hitting our monetary marks so you've got to just look at yourselves take a deep look at who you are what your expectations are going into the business, writing those out, sitting down and, and really discussing those thoroughly, and then probably getting a third party or more to to take a look at maybe somebody that knows you both and and can or a business professional, somebody from SCORE or somebody, an outside organization that can look at you, sit down with you, interview you both and help you determine, you know, the best roles. Well, currently our website is being built and structured the way that we want it. And that'll be available in December. And that'll be uh, tneleadership.com. Um, you can find us on Facebook under True North Enterprises. Um, I believe it's, uh, I want to say Teeny Leadership is how you can find us on there. Also, I'm also on Instagram and I'm on Facebook, as well as you can email me at jburgess at tneleadership.com. Reach out to me at, at p volpe at forwardmarchinc.com they can get a hold of us via our facebook or our website Uh, my number is directly is 888-723-6223 extension 101 and if you've got questions concerns ideas you want to bounce or 
need anything, guidance, help, whatever it is, uh, you know, feel free to, uh, my door is always open and I'm always willing to lend an ear and, and help where I can. I want to thank Jimmy Burgess of True North Enterprises and Paul Volpe of Forward March Inc. for pulling back the curtains on their friendship, partnership, struggles, and the very painful reality of their business separation. This kind of thing goes beyond just business and becomes a very personal experience. We're talking about a rooted friendship that is, as Paul told me, definitely on hold. And that sucks, to be honest with you, because Paul and Jimmy are real people with real goals and a real friendship. The goal of this episode was not to air anyone's dirty laundry, but to hear from two people who have lived and are still going through this struggle. That is a real aspect of business. Take your time before jumping into a joint venture. Consider the value of your friendships. Establish clear roles, expectations, limits, and goals. Maybe get a third party to sit down and talk to both of you about what you're about to jump into. All great advice from Jimmy and Paul. All right, folks, time to wrap it up. And before I do, be sure to subscribe to the AAR podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or however you listen to this podcast. Leave your comments. And I hope we earned that five-star rating from you. Again, just search the After Action Review Podcast and you'll find us. The AAR Podcast is on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube with the at sign, The AAR Podcast. If you haven't already, you need to stop whatever you're doing right now. Pick up your phone and go to your app's marketplace and download the Anchor FM app. It's free. And there you can subscribe and listen to the AAR blog cast. That's right. It's the AAR blog cast. It's your daily dose of veteran business news and motivation to help you stay on that grind. It's again, the AAR blog cast. Now, before we go, I want to congratulate Eric Easy E Rodriguez, our first sponsored athlete for an amazing victory at the International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation San Antonio Open in San Antonio, Texas. Gold medal looks awesome on that phenomenal veteran athlete. I also want to welcome William Wright to the AAR podcast family. He's now our second sponsored athlete. Willie's a correctional officer with aspirations of becoming a police officer in the city of Colleen, a city that needs good police officers and maybe Batman. Colleen, terrible place held together by law enforcement and corrections officers. Welcome to the family, Will. Glad to have you on board. And that does it for me, folks. Thanks for listening, and I will see you at the next episode.